I'll be back with that story after this message. Hey guys, Michael McDonald here. I wanted to kind of really quickly take you through a rough layout of some of the things I think through when we're trying to lay a solid foundation for a, uh, an emergent SaaS venture. Um, I have this kind of divided into three parts. I'm going to start here because I think there's some, some things that are worth uh, delineating and understanding before you even get to some of the, the process and methodology stuff. And the first thing is understanding, are you, do you have a niche? Are you actually carving out a new market? Or are you looking to disrupt an existing market? Um, reason being is because here with the niche, you're going to be doing uh, more things around educating that market, uh, content marketing strategies uh, will play in a little bit heavier here versus if you're disrupting an existing market, uh, the education has been done for you. You're just really now uh, differentiating against whatever it is that you're disrupting and how you're disrupting it. The second thing is which engine uh, is, do you want to get started first? What I found is actually that this uh, S going, starting with the SMB tends to work quite well first. Reason being is because there's a lot of server side versus client side stuff that's more in your control here. You're developing an impressive UX. Uh, this is where you can do the free trials that self-provision and then move into production environments with a lot of self-service type things built in. And it's easier to throw more resources at that than when you're going upstream and uh, satisfying the demands of the mid-market and enterprise market versus reversing that um, and, and trying to uh, recouple those things together. So, that's a good thing to think about. And then lastly, of course, your pricing strategy and your payment methodology strategy. Are you going to be um, invoicing versus ACH, that sort of thing. All right, um, the next thing I wanna take you through then is just kind of a tree trunk of a standard process that works for even whether you have a transactional selling environment or a consultative selling environment. Starting from the very top, you have your marketing universe. This is self-explanatory. Um, from there, you want to try to distill out uh, who your target buyers are. So your target account profiles, uh, more around the business uh, topography and attributes, and then who within a role do you want to target? These are your buyer personas, and you really need to focus in on this. You can't set it and forget it. This needs to be something you focus in on and keep uh, relevant along the way and continue to train and build this into your sales enablement um, and when you're onboarding new reps especially. But this is the, the tofu, mofu, and bofu. Those are uh, HubSpot borrowed terms. Top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, bottom of the funnel. It represents different levels of consumption um, in the MQL or marketing qualified lead space. This is before they're recognized as a sales qualified opportunity in your pipeline, right? So at the top, you have messaging and positioning. What do you want to say to whom? Where do they hang out? Um, subscribe to our blog post notifications, very high level stuff. Middle of the funnel is more uh, call to actions around uh, fill out this form and you can access this, this ebook or this uh, other content that might be gated. Um, you fill out this form and use our ROI calculator, stuff like that. So they're flirting with you a little bit, you're educating them, they're interacting with your content, but they haven't yet self-selected and said, I'm ready to enter into an active evaluation. That's where you get here to the bottom of the funnel. They fill out a form for a QTD, a quote, a trial, or to see a demo are the top three most common bottom of the funnel call to actions that you see there. Okay, so these are really inbound, what I've spoken about, marketing source leads. Um, you can also have an outbound strategy, which works uh, pretty well. I'm a big fan of Aaron Ross and some of the stuff he writes in Predictable Revenue around that. But regardless, you need a business development team or some sort of a filter here where they manage the F stage, the filter stage, where there's defined lead maturation criteria, or qualification criteria that we can all agree on would uh, make an MQL graduate to an SQO, a sales qualified opportunity now. Of course, keep in mind, these are all things we need to be able to measure and track in CRM. And uh, so once it gets to the filter stage, you can see it moves in reverse alphabetical order. Again, this bodes well for sales enablement and training when you're onboarding new reps. 
Keep it simple, keep it easy to remember. F, filter, E, excavate. You're digging up, you're cultivating champions, you're getting that agree to explore, you're understanding, they're, they're buying motivators, those, those sorts of things. D, differentiate. You've started to earn that trust. The prospect is, is introducing you to other stakeholders. You're differentiating yourself against their, uh, their said needs um, and, and where the, and their, their perception of value. Um, and you're also learning the unique buying motivators now and you secured it of them because not every prospect or opportunity is created equally, right? Then C, confirm value. Now you want to take all this great information and this great interaction and camaraderie you've developed and play it back for them to make sure that they see it the same way because only then can you move to B, bond, where you're actually proposing something to them now, doing executive presentations, proposal presentations, asking for the business. You might even introduce CS, your customer success team here, or if, if applicable, their dedicated account manager is good to do here, sharing a high level outline of the launch plan because you're making them feel comfortable about the path forward, life after the formalities of signing on the dotted line. Um, by the way, signing on the, on the dotted line is not important to the prospect, so I moved just to align the salesperson's finish line with the prospect's finish line into another step, A, activate, and that's when you're successfully bringing them on board to your solution and launching them, having a launch party if applicable, those sorts of things. And that creates a great alignment that just does beautiful things here, I've noticed in my A-B testing of it, of the interactions that are prior to that versus having a disjointed finish line of signing the agreement versus the prospect really just wants to be launched, right, on the product. From there, it goes into expansion stuff, your customer advocacy program, where you talk about upsell, cross-sell, if applicable, um, but definitely renewals, because we all know that you know, you're not bottom line in the black most of the time until that, that first renewal, that second and third term. So we, I like to celebrate renewals just as much as I celebrate new logos and, uh, and celebrate other things, other wins around um, the, the, uh, the company. Uh, product launches and things like that um, definitely need to, need to be celebrated as well. So that's a very rough overview there about how I like to think about this. Again, this works really well. Um, you can configure this easily into CRM. You can really start to get into the metrics that you need to measure for velocity and, and overall efficiency, like your sales stage duration by rep, by team, by this entire sales organization. How many calendar days does an opportunity stay generally or on average within each stage and see if you can make improvements there. Sales stage conversion percentages make sense. And you look for where the fall offs are so you can identify again by rep for coaching opportunities or by team and organization for additional training and efficiencies from a sales operation standpoint an enablement standpoint you might be able to introduce. Um, if I have one metric to go off of for measuring the overall health of a, of a sales organization or a business, it would be uh, CAC to LTV ratio, that's your customer acquisition cost to lifetime value. The three is still the magic number, so if it costs a dollar for to acquire a customer, you should, uh, tar you should have set a goal of a lifetime value of $3. Um, average sale price is definitely something you need to have a handle on. Um, average sale cycle, calendar day, that's the full gamut from, uh, from F to A. Um, again, depending upon which market you're in, you're going to see you know, 30 to 45 days is a good target in SMB, 60 to 90 in mid-market, enterprise 90, 120 to forever. And then win rate, of course, because win, you know, win rate is obviously something you need to uh, have a handle on for calculating and improving uh, pipeline velocity and uh, finding more efficiencies throughout the entire uh, process. So I hope I uh, dust over things too lightly. I hope that gives you a little bit of insight to how I think about things when I'm in there diagnosing and helping to develop a go-to-market strategy. There's a ton of sub-bullet points in here on how we execute. I can get into if you'd like in our further discussions, but hopefully that helps. Thank